So, well, it's got pin badges. <laughs> but there he is. He is completed. Damn you. Oh no. <sighs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah, most likely. So, yeez. An ivy saw. Look at that. <laughs> Hello. Whoops. Hello. Is that still... Let's look over that down a bit. There we go. Hello there. Free Ape. Thank you for the follow. <laughs> Sorry if I blew out your eardrums then. How are you doing today? i got to chase that follower goal now. I'm doing alright. <laughs> Didn't expect to follow straight off the bat. Thank you, Bill. Much appreciated. You know me? How do you know me? Oh, I see. Follow me on Twitter. It's nice to see you when someone on Twitter comes and joins you. I am a designer of things also. Awesome. Who are you on Twitter? I usually follow bad people who follow me. Oh, there you are. You are. I, I, re I remember now. Oh, yes, yes. Why, thank you. I think now is just to get my watch time up, I think. Now I'm over 50. <clears throat> yes, join me today as I'm taking a break. Bloody paint mixer. I'm taking a break from painting green. Which is this thing here. Yeah, definitely I'll stop by your stream today. Thank you. <laughs> the greens, purples. But I'm getting tired of painting green, so I'm painting something different. Today. No worries. Thanks as well, you know. M much appreciated. It's not wet. <laughs> My web pad is not wet. Bloody thing. Yeah, sure. How much, you know, I appreciate it a lot. Very much about painting, showing people, and helping people. Just need to get more viewers. Oh, I'll be back in a sec.
I usually get things. And this time it was now my palette wasn't wet. There we go. <clears throat> oh. Oh, let's get started properly, shall we? Okie dokie. Thank you for joining me. I am painting skin. Uh, like I said, I want to take a break from green for a little while. Last stream I built a kit. Um, the MG Dom in three hours. Which wasn't too bad for an MG kit. If I get the skin done in this, I'll uh, definitely paint more and uh, I'll build another kit if I get this painted for skin. Where do I put things? Right, everything's all set to go, let's go. Right, I do have a recipe book of all my painting recipes. So. I've got one for female skin, I've got one for fire effects, blood, angel armor, wolf pelt, pauldrons, purple, so yeah. So I'm using my, I'm using my female skin which normally is for miniatures, so my face is like a fraction of the size of this. but. I will be using this um, and modifying it slightly this, so it blends a little bit better. Um, I will probably double check my uh, um, mic just in case it starts buzzing again. again. It's alright. Right. moment. But sometimes, you know, it gets knocked. So yeah. And again, Free Haven, I'd appreciate the help. Even though we don't chat much on Twitter. I've been delving deeper into other things recently. Maybe one stream I'll do how I 3D model bits of kit I need. But for now, it's just paint. <coughs> right. So if you're all familiar with Citadel paints at the moment, the main base colour here is just Kislar Flesh. And the next colour I'm going to go to is shading. So I go from my medium colour and I go down to a shade and up to a highlight. So... What we do first is we'll mix some Kislar flesh with a little bit of Cadian flesh tone and get something that's slightly more of that than is that. And use that to shade and we'll gradually go all the way down to Doom Ball Brown. And also, thanks for being Sage. I know he's not here at the moment, but he did follow me last night, which is cool. Down. And then let's get some K 
Cajun flesh tone. Too much is enough to darken this a little. Yeah, that's good. Not that much darker, but it's dark enough. And then I'll turn it into a wash. A couple of drops of my medium. Mix it together. Again, this is just to help aid it blend together a lot easier. Does fall over free haven, so I know when he goes live. a little bit waterier than that. There we go. That should be a watery enough, yeah. Perfect. And then we just get into the creases of it. be too I'd say you don't want to be too um, tidy with this layer I need dust god I hate dust I really hate dust It won't look like there's much of a change, but there is. And it's very subtle. That's the idea. Try and give you shade to where most of the crevice and where you think the light would not hit it as much, like down here on this curve.
Get you. I'm putting it around the net there because there is a like a frilly collar to go over there. They okay, said so, uh, this color I don't want it on the highlights as little as possible. I don't need to be sparingly with it either. But the more subtle the change, the better. The better it blends, especially when it comes to glazing back over it. its entirety of her neck and under her chin will be shaded basically. Because that's normally in shadow, especially when you've got hair. to see it would be shaded. socket area need to be shaded a little go get my hands on some decals maybe make my own be easier to make my own like okay that's that color on that head The colour on his hair was completely by accident, but it looks good. So it kind of does give me a dilemma where her hair is normally like a pale pink or light look. And unfortunately what I've done with her hair is given her like a muddy green. So this entire effect though was by accident because it's it was originally base white, but the white didn't like the hair for some reason. So I went over with a satin black, and then I went over that with a primer, which is also a body filler, which is a yellow. Which gave me this colour. Then I went over with a matte gloss. And for some reason it's turned out shiny. And glazed. It's weird. <laughs> Next, we need to add some more Cajun flesh tone. Just uh, flesh tone is almost dead, to be honest.
See, that's a nice darker tone again. And so I keep adding it to the same area because it keeps it fresh. Eventually, we'll have to add some more medium to it. So you can see already how different that is to that. Here. Again, just into the recesses. Not as liberal with this one. You don't want to do two less, just less enough. Try to follow the contours of the shape. Move my stream over to art. To be fair, I should re retitle my stream. <laughs> I even changed my title. God, I'm getting bad at this. You know more better than I do. So, I got what you say. So much to remember when you're doing these streaming stuff. So if you never played or know what this character is from, this is Sirius from Azure Lane. She is a ship girl and a, a artist and creator called Mami Quant on Twitter who works with a lot of um, uh, a lot of figure making companies was generous enough to give me a file for this 3D print not many people have this file either so I was very grateful for it I 
I've had it for a while now. I've only just plucked up the courage enough to do it justice. At least do serious some justice. Hello, Gumpa. Or Steven. How you doing? Welcome to my fine stream. At the moment, I am just painting skin on a big boob thing. Before I pop in and say hi. That's much appreciated, mate. Very much appreciated. You can catch me painting serious from Azure Lane. A special 3D file I got off a Japanese artist. And I plucked up the courage to paint her. Yeah, you see big titties, yeah. <laughs> I am painting a bust. Hopefully it goes well. This is the sort of thing that my missus is into. It's from an artist she actually quite likes too. Yeah, I was very, very generously given this file. As I was saying before, not a lot of people have this file. The 3D print. So I'm quite honoured by that. Especially knowing of the West. <laughs> Maybe a few people in the East have a, this file, but not barely anyone I know of at all has a room for West. So I'm quite happy with that. <sighs> oh. How are you doing? Steven, what have you been up to? How's work been? So much today. So goopy. We've set up a shop. Oh, hello, Stevie. This is always on Monday after weekend. Got the first thing going on, so couldn't get on Rick's stream this afternoon. Oh, that's fair enough. He's showing off the box you gave him. How you doing? I'm all right, Stevie. How are you? <laughs> you have noticed I am wearing my Sonic pajamas. I actually can't remember what I said. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, if the only thing I can remember, I can't remember you. If, if I set him to Farallax? Is it Farallax? I can't remember. I, I, didn't, I haven't watched I, uh, Witch from Mercury yet. How you doing, Stevie? 
Apart from the fact that there's either a rat or a mouse in my house, I'm doing good legs. <laughs> Do have a PG Strike Rogue, which I need to get sent out to him this week. Alright. Awesome. Hopefully, Pass the Force don't intervene. Or the DPD. Or DHL. <laughs> I cannot remember. They're all crap right now. Yeah, see, I get mice here and rats here all the time. I live in the middle of the countryside. He keeps claiming all the good stuff. He does, doesn't he? And you're lenient on him, too. You let him pay when he wants. <laughs> Which I do understand, to be honest. <laughs> you're going to have to let me know when you get those... If you get more PGs unleashed in, man. Because I definitely want one. I'll be telling the DHL story tomorrow. Oh, good. Because <laughs> that is ridiculous. I'm not too worried about this hard line at the moment. I do like Story Corner. <laughs> oh yes, Story Corner. I'm in a village trying to buy fields, it's understandable. I've got a mouse. Cool mouse already this year. We've killed two rats and three mice so far. Bloody buggers keep getting into the house. We've got traps and poison down just to stop them, but they keep getting in the attic. Which is always fun. <laughs> Wait on Cosmic Group to update me. Seems they have ghost me again. God damn it. No matter how I cut it, Steve, you know, if you ever get one, you're going to be the cheapest I can get it. My dog just wants to play with <laughs> yeah, my dog, too. But the thing is, the rats here are about the same size as my dog. Bless her. She's only a little dashing. We, uh, we have a massive stable and we like getting in there to get the duck food. Oh, I got a shop, eh? Alright, does she need cut covering anytime soon? <laughs> no, she's alright for the moment. We're planning to go down Cornwall at some point, take her with us. Good, the colour's starting to come through, which is nice. See the shade's starting to come through now. There's a hard shade line just there. But I can get that. My little boy needs to empty his He's ugly. <laughs> yeah. Mine tends to do that too. She likes humping the other dogs. She goes around humping Paul Pickle, who's a big old blonde Labrador. Bit like a one year has seen a junior. I'm probably going to get it done at some point. <laughs> Mrs. Wrinkle said, being just right, expect a bit small to tackle a lab. No, <laughs> yeah, she might be a bit small, but don't stop her. You, you own one, you know the Daxons are quite boisterous. Problem is, just because she's a she's a lockdown puppy, so we've got to get some more socialised. It's 
well. <laughs> Buster Labrador's a stupid idiot. Absolute idiot, Lab. So, yeah. They got high hopes. They do. They do indeed. She jumps a good three feet. She's gone for bed, so. I do have a standard as well, but she's pretty small for a standard. Debated. <laughs> it looks at me and those eyes. I can't bring myself to do it. <laughs> Morty's a full mini. All right. This is the thing. Is like when we were thinking about getting because we settled on a dashend instantly, and then we were thinking about getting one. It's like because I live with my father-in-law. I live in the annex. Which is a two bedroom, two bathroom, full on annex. But yeah, so and he's like, I don't want to get a, I don't want to get a dog one. I want to get a bitch. I don't want a dog. <laughs> I don't, want, I don't want its cock dragging along the floor. <laughs> but yeah, the dashes get you those eyes, man. get R spaded because she is just terrible when she's on eat. Always trying to hunt the other dogs and then she she's had three seasons and two of those seasons have been phantom pregnancies. So she's constantly whining and things. I little which I mentioned they were breeding theirs and I couldn't say no. Bloody expensive still. Yeah. I think we got ours for 1500 And that was after. We also got a discount for 500 2k, yeah. We were going to pay 2k for ours. But, um, yeah, for, for the last we were buying her off, said, oh, I know it's going to go to a loving family, so I'll cut you 500 because partner's autistic. So, yeah, I'm just going to lower a bit here so I'm not peeking. His brother came out dapple and uh, they kept it. All right. Yeah, oh, this is black. I think yeah, she's black with just bits of tanned feet. You know what everyone wants. And she's the last of the litter too. All the others had been brought already. Stone now, so I've now reached the full color. Next color, he goes there with me. Obviously, he's always at the shop, greets with a bark, and then want you to play. Yeah. Yeah, mine's the same, little totty. She gets so excited when she sees someone. That bark of it. And to be fair, for such a small dog, they've got quite a big bark. And it's not yappy, thankfully. I hate yappy.
but yeah, they're, they're very playful dogs, which is nice. But I read horror stories about Daxons not being able to be. He's already loving though. Like his mother, yeah. Totties the same. You wake up in the morning, she's there. Give me licks and cuddles. When she had to go to the um, vets the other day and stay overnight, she was like very affectionate towards the nurses. Yes, I, I read some horror stories. I was like with Dashins that some people, even after being three years old, can't seem to house train the dog. I'm like, how can you not house train it? Saying they, they, they still pee and and go, you know, shit in the house and that. Like, how do you how do you live? Time to buy nappies. For the little dogs, because they're not house trained properly. Took us nearly two years of him, and just got him trained. Really? I, I, I don't know why it's a dash. I think maybe because ours grew up with Labradors. Um, but she was house trained within two months, if not three. Willful dogs, yeah. You yeah, thought he was house trained within. Two, three months. Maybe just because she's different. She's a very different attachment. Thinks of her belly. She'll eat anything. Which I know a lot of dashings are picky. But she is nowhere near picky. Again, I think it's because she grew up with Labradors. If it rains, she won't have it. Yeah, nope, nope, she's the same. <laughs> she won't go out. She'll look at you with those big puppy dog eyes of hers. And go, why? Why you do this to me, Daddy? And then she'll want to go back, come back in again. He's like, she'll bark and bark, want to go for a walk. You go to take her for a walk and it's raining again. She'll go, nope, come back in again. So yeah, she's very picky when it comes to that. Doesn't like getting her feet wet. She's alright out of the shower, but yeah. She loves snow though. Very strange. Yeah, well, Toy likes snow too, which is weird for. Her. She likes eating it, <laughs> mainly. But she doesn't like um, she doesn't like fire. So we've got quite a bit of land here, and we have our own f um, bonfires and that to burn a lot of rubbish and waste. And yeah, she does not like fire at all. Hates smoke. I think you love the cold. <laughs> uh, dragging them through the snow, you just see these two little lines behind him. <laughs> Some decals for these eyes. Because I can't be asked to paint me eyes. <laughs> one line. <laughs> That's exactly what my father in law didn't want one. <laughs> he couldn't part with it. <laughs> Especially as there's two labs of bitches, so. <laughs> Having a hung, hung little dash and trying to. Hump everything is not <laughs> not what you wanted. <laughs> oh, I've had to order a new mic because this one keeps buzzing and it's a connection, so I just keep checking it periodically. But for my own order is not in stock yet. And it's from Amazon too, so yeah. So the next colour I'm using is Bugman's Glow Citadel range, which is just a more earthy flesh shade. I 
I got a road. I think there's a road. Let me have a look. Um, Amazon still haven't got one in stock here. So I'm waiting on it. Hopefully, I get one soon. Um, but I'm keeping on it. Yeah, it's a, a road pod mic. Fam, Hyperx one I've got is really pretty. Yeah, a lot of people have been saying the Hyperx is really good. The only problem I have with HyperX is, is USB. I use a lot of XLR gear because it's what I get for free. So you know, this mixer unit here is this uh, is a Zenix Q8 2802. It has four inputs, two of them XLR, two of them um, quarter inch, three quarter inch mics, and another two or three quarter inch mics and stuff like that. It's, it's a Fancy dancy music mixer for mu uh, music mics, but I get it all for free. I don't have to spend money on mixer stuff then. So I brought me a um, road just to show you. So I brought this, but I've got to wait for it to get in stock because out of stock. Um, when I purchased it, it was like ninety quid. But it's gone up now. Um, so yeah, I think they've got it back in stock as soon as they increased the price. <laughs> but I should get it at a cheaper price. So yeah, but this is a Australian-made fancy dandy proper mic XLR. I tried setting one up and just fucked it, so I went USB. Yeah, USB is just easier, quicker. But as I've already got all this set up, I might as well just buy another XLR. Plus, there's not much difference in price. The uh, HyperX is like 90 quid. The one I just brought was just uh, over 90 quid. So, so I'm to relearn everything. Because when this mic works, um, let me get my other camera. There we go. So when this mic works, I've got all these dials here where I can change everything I need without having to use a mixer. Yeah, so I've got a Logitech 1080, I think the one up here is. Whereas this one's just a cheap Chinese knockoff I got from Japan. Even then, this camera is not for, not very good. It was when it first came out, but since then, it's a, yeah, not good at all. So yeah, yeah, ten eight p. HD, all that jazz, but it's a larger tech, you can't go wrong. But then it's like if you if you look at YouTubers these days, they use um, XLR cameras. Like proper full on like digital cameras that you use for photography as a camcorder or a webcam. It's crazy. Just gotta mix some more new gym in. But yeah, if you if you got a little camera, I'd say go Logitech. Logitech seems to be some of the best cameras you can get. I'm gonna to change paintbrush now. Go even smaller. Couple of guys mentioned the refresh rate of mine being not so great. So at least I need to pick one up for my face. <laughs> you should just do what I do and just don't bother with a face cam. <laughs> no one needs to see my face. All they need to see is what I'm doing. But I do have an avatar, like uh, V does.
Razer Pro I have I'm looking at kits it's fine yeah yeah Razer doesn't do too bad not the best but I've been looking at El Gato because their kit stuff is trying to get good so you see El Gato capture cards from back in my early YouTube days I used to do a lot of gaming One good third point for me is that people can talk to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's always useful, especially when you're streaming. That's not too fast. People still talk to me. They can hear my voice. And it's not like there's not pictures of me on twi Twitter and that. Do you really want to see what I look like? And shocker, I'm no different from most fat white men. got you on screen and Rick on another. <laughs> yeah, that's always handy to do. I used to have dual screens, so I stopped doing using it though, didn't have space. I do that sometimes as well with, with v, when V's on. I have him on one screen, someone else with another, like being Sage or someone. Yeah, I have seen signs on the riser. Ridiculous. I was watching them this afternoon. Unable to uh, put together some missile pods. <laughs> I don't know. Like I said, I'll probably get the PG and Leash, and I think that'll be my only PG for a while. I do have a PG wing, but not much space. I've got a Nightingale to build yet, so that's going to take up a lot of space. That's probably why it's so expensive. Yeah. Yep, because it's massive. <laughs> it's not a small kit. And the double O is one of my favourites. I've got a MG Ray riser. <laughs> I am just applying a mix of bug wings glow with Cajun flesh tone to move the recesses, bringing the shade back further and further from the first surface of skin and more towards the recess as you can see it's, you can start seeing the shading coming through now I stuck the PG Strike Freedom and stuck just looked at it and went why did I buy that for myself <laughs> yep you can have fun with that I 
Hopefully when I get some money I'll be able to get some more kits because I'm running low. But I need to sell some stuff on eBay first. I've got MS06 Zaku PG coming this week, so I may build that. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I do like the sound of that. I like my Zaku's. But yeah, that'd be a cool build. That look good in the shop, too. As far as I know, other Zaku PGs are hard to get hold of. The expansion kits for them are fine, but the Zaku itself. What I always find disheartening when doing stuff like this is that eventually it starts to look a bit blobby. But I have to keep reminding myself that I will be going over it again, glazing it. So, which will shade it together there. We got some PB kits coming in too. Oh, that's cool. If it goes on sale, it'll be 200. Ooh. <laughs> it's not bad, really. You think about it, two hundred for a PG. When the unleashed is like, what two seven five, two thirty if you buy in Japan. But import and custom fees yeah. makes it three hundred. Yeah, two seven five. Yeah, which is like a like I said, I had a good look around. And he went to Japan, and it's like to buy a kit in Japan, you're looking at 230, 240. Then to even to send it via surface, you're looking at um, 20, 30 quid. And then you've got customs on top. So by the time you actually get it from Japan, it's, you're looking at over 300 quid. So yeah. Yeah, plus you ship for free. So, you know. <laughs> I'm definitely buying one from you once you get one in stock. Just a shame I missed out on the last pre-order you did. I can wait. I waited this long. Checking prices of Mandrake and they're shipping it for... Whoa. Excluding shipping. Damn. 45,000. Yeah, then again, I don't trust Mandrake. <laughs> I never trusted Mandrake. Mrs. brought a lot from there when it came to figures. She got wise. I was lucky when I got my um, PG Wing, Z Wing Zero. I got it from Ami Ami for ninety quid because they had some excess stock in their warehouse. They found, you know, just a PG Wing, so they were selling them for ninety quid. Like, oh, having that. <laughs> the issue with them is whole shipping costs. Yeah, 
there's such a big box. Which I can understand, you know. That's yeah, that's what I mean. I was like I couldn't believe it. And that was only a year ago, two year ago, I brought it. Now Miami was selling it, I was like, I could not let it pass, I had to buy it. It did arrive and it did have some issues, but it is an early PG. I think, um, but this, it did, I don't think it was for Pearl Edition, you know, one of the Pearl coating, it was just a normal one. But yeah, um, it arrived and I was building it. And it's one of the springs for one of the batteries was missing. So I had to make a new one for it out of a paper clip. And now it's sat up there on my bookshelf, but um, one of the right arm keeps dropping. It's got one of the glasses uh, in it, and it just keeps dropping. I know it should have cost from Japan, and some of the Japanese sellers are getting scammy with them. Yeah. Yeah, even um, by E or uh, from Japan are getting really ridiculous with their postage. I have no way to start. Right. Let's add some more bubbling glow to the mix. Yeah. I might as well got some stuff once I get some money to get sent from Bayes Warehouse. Some Pokemon stuff. He's gone off as well as he. All right. Just put my thing down here where this fella says. E. <laughs> yeah, when Rick usually comes in or V comes into my stream, I usually start opening Pokemon cards for them. I don't really do it most of the time. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Didn't mean to burp. Yeah, so what we're doing, just mix that. Um, so yeah, let's go for deeper into recesses. Not pull it out as much. Then I was. I had some Pokemon cards and a mug for B. I found some stuff that I thought you might like, so I went and ordered it. So hopefully, once I get some money, I can get that here and get it sent to him. I've also sent a parcel to Rick. With a gun, couple of Gundam kits in it for him to look at. Because I'm never going to get around to building them. So you can have them. Yeah. I think it's one of them is a um, HG Barbatos, but it's an Ishiban Kuji Prize C. So it's got partial clear parts on it. And another 
was a HG Zaku 2 from 1992. So it's all one color. <laughs> it's all red. I'm not going to go around building that either. I've got too many RGs to build. So yeah, you can have fun with that. And a transformer. <laughs> Send them a transformer I don't think, think it's ever seen before. That's going to be special. Yeah. I sent it by next day, so hopefully a bloody part Royal Mail and and actually do their job. Because they haven't done it for the past few times I've sent parcels to him. They've always been delayed. So if he gets the HG ninety nine two I believe it was ninety nine two. It's a it was a really old It's one colour and it was all red, Saku two. It's definitely one one forty four, maybe before HGs. I just count anything that's one one forty four HG unless it's an RG. So yeah. It's definitely an old kit. So I've got a, give you some idea, class 50 locomotive in zero, zero gauge, new, cost 196. Wow. Really? I used to, I used to do model trains. Way back. But still. In a class 50 locomotive like this size. And zero zero. No, that's one locomotive. God. And no rolling stock. Yeah, I am. Um, where are you? Hence why I buy a second hand. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Steve, it was um, this one here. Uh, let me just show you. So I sent one of these. I just had lying around. Mine had a red label on. 99? Yeah, All right, 99. I know, it's just a very old kit I had lying around. Just sent it to him. Yeah, have fun with it. Yeah. So Rick's going to get one of them. Eventually, when he gets money, he's going to send me his PG Unicorn. So I can play with it. Because he doesn't want it. He was going to bid it. So I was like, oh, I'll have that. i got things I can do with that. Yeah, the old FG, I think they called them. No, he owes me first. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, you weren't there, were you? Did he tell you? He hit, he, 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 oh, I can't speak. He hit a pothole last night. He blew out his tyre. <laughs> so he's got to uh, get new tyres first. That's two new tyres he needs now. Luckily, he only dented his rim, not cracked it. So he doesn't need a new rim. <laughs> yeah. 
can believe it. He has worse luck. I reckon he just says these things well. Just get out of pain stuff. <laughs> but yeah, he just he's so unlucky when it comes to that car is. Yeah, he said he said it'd probably buy retires second hand offline, which is probably a good idea. And just get them feared. I can't believe when he said it, it was like just what is your luck with that car? Gonna get the, he's going to try and get the council to pay for it because it was a massive pothole. It's going on sale. <laughs> My boss did that and cracked his alloy on his Range Rover. So you can imagine the price. Yeah, I think. What does he drive? I can't remember what he drives. Some little hatchback. <laughs> Oh, God, bloody thing. I have a problem with Sam with steel wheel rims. Always for can't afford to run a car with. Then get one you can afford to. <laughs> uh. Yeah, I had, to get, I had to get my car crushed. It turned into scrap. I don't have a license, so I got a provisional and that's it. Didn't bother learning to drive. being in the Navy and all that, all the stuff was on my doorstep. And when I was in college, I could just roll out of bed into college because my house was five minute walk. So I can say that now, I have the crippled. <laughs> I'm sure it's no tax, no payments, just fuel and go. That's pretty good. <laughs> we have a, um, a Morris Minor convertible to rebuild. We've had, we took it apart and got it resprayed for my mother-in-law's birthday. Now we just need to rebuild it. And my uh, brother-in-law's been messing around with his Volkswagen Beetle too much. And he just seized the engine again. <laughs> After doing some drag racing in it. So that's always fun. Not to mention we, we just had to fix the fuel system in our digger. <laughs> So much goes wrong around here. Oh. Ah. Oh. But yeah. No worries for me when it comes to that stuff. To be fair, though, I should really get my license. Especially with my pet, my in laws reaching their 60s. My partner's condition deteriorating, I should learn to drive. But it's so expensive. I've wondered how much Rick makes from Twitch. I don't think he makes that much, if you think about it. At the moment, he has 70 subs. A sub is, what, four quid? So you're looking at what was 40 times 7. They had to drive an auto. I, oh, I hate autos. I hate automatics. I, I like driving a manual. I do like actually driving a manual. My my mother-in-law's car is an auto. It's a high, Toyota Corolla hybrid. And my father-in-law's car is a Volkswagen Golf Mark IV. I have no option. Yeah, that makes sense. Gonna take my test. Was most like forever until it snowed. Ah, yes. Should be like my mum. She learned to drive in a Ford left hand drive Ford Capri in the snow in Germany. That's how she learned to drive. Whereas my dad has a tank license 
and a HGV license. But my, my dad's one of those people, you just... I've never, ever tried to be like my dad, because you can't. There's no way you could be like my dad. I could never be like my dad. So I've never strived to be like him while doing. Because how can I beat an MBE? <laughs> I do remember my biker days. Yeah, everyone remembers their biker days. I used to have a little rat dirt bike. But most of my most of my older transports was a bicycle or a skateboard. I was driving tractors and bobcats by ten, yeah. I've always lived on military bases, so I can get my pilot's license <laughs> before I can get my driving license. I have flowing. So go on to my sponge. Oh well, I don't care. I don't care. I love doing my helicopter one. Yeah. Helicopter's a lot harder to fly. A lot harder to fly than a plane. As someone who's worked on them, maintained them, rebuilt them from the ground up, and they are buggers. I've seen everything that can go wrong with a helicopter go wrong. From tires bursting to rotors popping off. Like it was There's a story that my dad used to tell me about Lynx about Lynxes because he used to work on Lynxes. Um when because we moved to Germany in two thousand and one with the army took over and they didn't have any Safety equipment specialist, and of course my dad's an RAF safety equipment specialist. So he went over, we went with him. But yeah, he was telling me a story about a pilot. The son came running out to, because they just got out. Well, I think it was a pilot or a passenger. They just got out of the aircraft, and the rotors were still spinning. And the kid came running up and put the kid on his shoulders, and then he w walked into the rear blades. Just red confetti. I've seen my fair share of accidents when it comes to helicopters and aircraft. Nearly being involved in myself. I've lost, need lost my life twice to aircraft. All because someone doesn't know how to jack an aircraft up. One was lean hand who fought putting wooden blocks under the bottle jack because it wasn't lifting properly was a good idea. <laughs> Time of control planes, etc. And certainly no for problems that can happen. Crash and being the least of them. Yeah, there are ways though. In a helicopter there is a way if you lose engine power there is a way to survive and actually land it without damaging anything. The idea is is that you push down the cyclic. Not the cyclic, is it cyclic? Yeah, the cyclic. You push down the cyclic so you start to drop. Yeah, with the auto rotate, and you pull up at the last second. That gives you a cushion of air. Best way of getting out of it. That's if you're not in a tailspin, because that's how horrifying tailspin you won't get out of. My dad used to be a crash scene investigator. That's how he got his MBE. Uh, the amount of bodies he's seen. 
just from crashes like that. Not to pick you off or anything. <laughs> Most accidents happen due to pilot error. When it comes to aircraft. Won't put me off. I really want to, to do it, I will. Yeah, that's fair enough. It's a good attitude to have, really, especially when it comes to aircraft. I remember this one time we were out in Cyprus. And we were, yeah, one of the pilots came in on the Harrier. Back when I was working on Harriers. They still need a whole lot of. More kits to pay for lessons, yeah, definitely. You know, I was on the and this pilot was out in the what we call the T Birds, which are two seater Harriers, which are used for training. And sometimes in these T Birds, the Harriers would take out the engineers, or the maintainers, out with them. You know, as a treat, you know, a little treat of flight. <laughs> and one of these pilots went out and it was. Showing off on the runway to one of a air traffic control girl, and he put his hands up to say, "Look, no hands." <laughs> and his sleeve caught the controls for the nozzles, <laughs> which started to make the Harrier plummet. So him and the engineer had to eject. Bloody pilots. But yeah, whenever you hear about a, a Harrier crashing, it's always because a pilot had done something stupid. We've never lost a Harrier to a firefight. Oh, my ear. Hey, yeah, he's doing gun and fire, is he? Oh. Do not make me want to fly. <laughs> I love the Harrier because I worked on it a lot. I was one of the few people who worked on a Harrier when it was decommissioned. And we were not happy. i tell you that. Boy, were we not happy. Harrier. Oh, for bloody. Oh, RF getting their bloody way. Even though I don't understand why they retired. No one. I can tell you why they retired him. I know exactly why. And the bloody dickhead admitted it. So, the F 85 is just overpriced shite. It is. Absolutely. It, it's not fit for purpose. It's just too powerful. The engine is too powerful for one. It melts runways. But yeah, the. Um, when there was a budget that was coming in where we had to make cuts and the guy in charge of the entire fixed wing military at the time was some RAF jerk off and um, the RAF have always wanted to push the Navy out of fixed wing aircraft they've always wanted to get rid of them because they've always fought the RAF with a creme de la creme when it came to fixed wing when in fact the RAF were created by Navy and Army pilots Back in World War One, the flight, the fleet air wing, which is the Navy's flight part, which I was part of, they were um, fleet air arm. They were always they were there since World War One, or before World War One. Yeah, so this RAF Jerkoff saw an opportunity to get the Navy out of fixed wing early. So instead of disbanding three of his six tornado squadrons, which were costing lots of money. He got rid of the last three Harrier squadrons instead. 
which are two RAF and one Navy. And a training squadron. Yeah, basically. Jerk off. Oh, so much I've just hated him. He had the front to come to our base and try to explain away why he did it. He's lucky we were in the forces, I would beat the shit out of him. Couldn't believe it. Could not believe it. And you know how we found out? The same way the Ark Royal Captain found out about his ship on the morning news. We weren't even told beforehand. We watched it on the morning news while we're in the crew room. We were not happy. We just downed tools. We didn't sod it, we're going home. Even the pilots weren't happy. Except the Canadian body went back to working on AV8Bs. But yeah, none of us were happy about it. Yeah. He lost his job. <laughs> but still. It's a shame. We sold. We took out all the radar and radio systems. Because they're the best in the world. And we sold them, we sold the airframes back to the um, US, so they could use them for spare parts for the AV-8Bs. Because the AV-8B and the Harrier GR7 and GR9 share the same airframe. The only thing that makes them different is the radi radar and radio systems. No, exactly. We're not ready. They're like, oh, we're, we're building another four nuclear subs. Yeah, but when? When, they, when are they going to be ready? That's the question. Not any time soon, I can tell you that. Oh, I'm going to put this back. <sighs> Not getting much views from art. I'll get me some creating because it's a bloody figure not an art piece <laughs> yeah weirdo no good if it's just a conventional war yeah exactly that uh, we didn't need it wasn't for the S-35s, we didn't need the new aircraft carriers either. The Ark Royal and the Ocean were good enough. All they needed was a rehaul. Refit, and that's it. They'd be good to go. I'm not sure people would do something. He always does. He's already a, a want, worldwide wanted criminal, isn't he? So. so yeah, if anything happens. Right. That is getting too big. <laughs> Gonna start over here. Then France will surrender and it'll be opposed to risk. Yeah, as always. It's different now. I think what would help when the war is drones. UAVs. Just like what Ukrainians are using right now. Other problem is, though, is the UK is now part of the Pacific Water Trade Alliance, or whatever it's called. 
stupid idea. Yeah, we might get cheaper rates when it comes posting from Japan, but it's not really a good trade block to be part of. We have a cipher world to it. I'm just adding Bubbins Glow with a dash of Cadian and start doing a proper shading now. As you can see, she is coming together. This is just a shading. I'm just trying to get in for recesses now. Here is where skin touches cloth. Don't need to worry about getting too much on the skin now. I still haven't decided on what colours I'm going to do her dressing yet. Maybe a light blue. Maybe a green. <laughs> I'm sick of green. Probably go with a purple. I love purple. Super good. Oh, anyway, what I'm here. That was a quick break, drink break, I think. Never finds anything. If you knock out clips, it won't show anything. <laughs> Oh, 
I have clips. All right, I'll shout you out then. I gotta make some more clips. Factory, guy. We'll One's playing for you. Okay, so question was asked: Can you mix Yoohoo glue with acrylic paint? And the answer would be yes. It's full still. Bubbled up. I learned a lot from doing building model trains, especially when it comes to scenery stuff. Someone asked if you could mix UHU with paint, so clip, yes you can. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You'd be surprised what you can mix. One of my favourite things to miss is resins. So people don't realise it, but with 3D printed resin, you can mix it with other resins to get different effects, to get different properties. So if you have a resin you like, say it's ABS like, but it's I think ABS for resins are hard to get clear. You can mix it with a clear resin. It won't be as a uh, crystal, but it'll still have the properties of the ABS and have be slightly clear. Stop watching him now. <laughs> Bloody thing. So I shall have to look into his 3D print. Yeah, this figure is 3D printed. This bust I'm doing. Um, I do a lot of 3D printing. In fact, I sell a lot of 3D printing. That's where I make most of my money. I made this in. Um, the program escapes me now. Uh, what was it called? Tinkercad. So I made this in Tinkercad. This armor, all this here. You can see one of the valve handles broken off. But yeah. So I designed this in 3D in Tinkercad. You can see the print hasn't come out that well. This is printing errors, more than model error. Um. Yeah, I just wanted a because Forge World stopped making the Hellhound tank like this, and GW do their own Hellhound, which I think looks absolutely stupid compared to this. So I made my own. Yeah, pre print is very useful, especially with prototyping, or just random stuff. It's like I know Steven's going to be the oh, Pokemon, but yeah, Pokemon stand for my. Favorite card. Oh. Mm. Models like this. <laughs> so yeah, I'm 3D printing this and doing this for my partner. Got to do with loads of gap filling, and she does have clothes. Do you need to be artistic to use Tinkercad? No. So, Tinkercad is 
a online software, so you don't even need to download anything. You get those frame arm kits brought. <laughs> I want to, but my missus does not like me buying such things. The only reason I can print stuff like that is because I make them for her. <laughs> she doesn't let me get stuff like it. <clears throat> but no, you don't need to be artistic to use Tinkercad. Tinkercad is more of a um, technical program. Show off really. Um, and you don't have to be like anything special. So let me just bring it up. Um, Chrome. Oh, look at that infinite. So, yeah, so this is Tinkercad. And you can see I've also done some pin badges. If you go and so I've done like 42 designs now. The first thing I've made um, was a base, display base. Then I made a disc tray cog for my father in law for his business. Then I made some V blocks. These V blocks are um, where I make quite a lot of money from. And Black Knight Shield, but it's very technical, it's more technical than artistic. So when you go, say, let's see, um, let's just start something new, 3D design, so you can do circuits and that in here as well. So you get this work plane here and you get a bunch of shapes over here, just plug a shape down, do whatever dimension you want with it, and I can change the snap grid, I usually go to 0.1. You can change dimensions by clicking on these here. And then you can cut holes of these kind of shapes. But you can turn any shape. So you can grab a shape like that and you can just turn it into a hole. Make the hole. Or to cut things into certain angles that you want. So it's very easy. To get hang of in that. The hard bit is getting it to do what you want it to do. So I've managed to get to do to do things I wanted to do that other people can't. But it's it's just learning that basically. That's the hard part. Using it for what it's not meant to be used for. <laughs> but it's like I'm doing my next thing I'm gonna be doing on there is um where is it? So I'm like, I'm remaking one of these. I've already done the G1 exhausts. Trap's just gone. <laughs> so yeah, so I'm doing redoing the exhausts. I'm going to be doing another grill. And I've done the trailer door that goes with this. So... So I've done that door. Got a mouse, nice. So, yeah, so I've done this door as well. And they're all free at the moment on 3D prints. So Colt's 3D to download and for others to use when they need to. Dust. Hate dust. Right. Let's go to full bugsman's. Well, I'm close to being at the darkest colour yet. It's just because I keep going between shades. So, as long as you can measure, you can create the part you want. Yeah, exactly. If you can measure the part, you can create it. So I've got a set of, I've always got a set of digital calipers on, this, on my desk. 
just so I can, you know, measure parts I want. And this is my first 3D design printed. It's meant for this guy here. Let's see in it. But also, thing is, when you measure and then you go to print it, you've got to take into account shrinkage. Or some stronger, some parts. Or you, yeah, that's why I sold a lot of my stuff because I couldn't get the parts for it anymore. Like, I had a Royal Mail um, steam locomotive. I sold it because I couldn't get parts for it. Stuff like that. So, yeah. But yeah, it's definitely worth looking into. That's why I've been doing it now, is so I can make replacement parts for Gundam, replacement parts for Warhammer, replacement parts, toys that you can't get normally. And then I, and then I put the files up for free because half the time I don't own the copyright to the toy that I'm making the replacement part for, so I can't sell it really, be illegal. So I just put them up for free for other people to download and print. Except for that hellhound. I, I just charged that hellhound because I spent so much time and effort on it. I wasn't going to be giving that up for free. Dust is the bane of my life. I've got a class 55 with a broken axle plate. So 3D printing would be, I don't, yeah, it'd be great for that. I devise as well, because there's lots of different types of resins you can get as well. And probably the best resin you'll probably want is ABS light because it'd be as strong as ABS plastic then because I this is all this is made out of water washable which is good for miniatures but for anything that needs strength not so good because it's, it's brittle so if you want strength out of it you want to ABS you can also get a rubber resin too so you can get rubber resin, you can get ABS like resin. What I've seen some people do is mix the rubber resin with ABS like resin to get like a potty cap plastic resin out of it. Awesome, thanks for the information. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy to help everyone. If you do, when you do get a printer, let me know. And I can give, because one of the hard things about 3D printing is dialing in your settings for your printer. And I've got settings that work on most printers. They take a little bit longer to print, but they work. As long as you know how to do the supports are good. So And I may do a stream on how to support 3D files at some point. Because I have to really support all this. Because it didn't come supported. And a lot of people don't know how to do it. So I might do a stream on it. Is it right? Quick, big computer? Or can I use my laptop? Slight. As long as you your, you can use a laptop. Um, just bear in mind, the slicing program takes up a lot of processing power. Um, but yeah, you don't need anything big. I know people who just use tablets. And to a task confer. Yeah. So, it's like, my printers, I use an Elegoo Saturn and an Elegoo Mars 2. Which is, you know, they do. 
an Agnew Saturn 2 will probably, or a Mars 3 will probably be your better bet because they're more up to date and they've got better protective equipment. Mine don't have any protective equipment on it because it's older. But then there's others as well you can look at. You don't have to go with the Saturn, you don't have to go with Elegoo. But Elegoo is the easiest, cheapest, and quickest way to get into 3D printing. They're damn cheap. I think a Mars 2, you're looking at 150 quid. That gives you 2K resolution for printing. There's my Saturn's a 4K. <clears throat> and I think um, Gundam Fan has the Saturn 2, which is an 8K. I think for your level, or Mars 3 would do fine. Or Mars 2. What you want it for. So, would you recommend resin or filament? Resin. Because resin will give you a finer resolution. There are a few filaments that filament printers that can go to like 0 0.05 or 50 microns, but most don't. They usually only go to they go to like 500 microns, so half a millimeter in layer thickness. Whereas like a Mars three can get to um, yeah, Mars three can do 30 microns, so 0, 0. 0 0.03 millimeters, so the resin is a lot finer. This is done in this is done in 30 microns. This was you can barely see the layers on her. Yeah, definitely, definitely worth saving up for one if you want to to improve or just prototype. I, I use it mainly to prototype or make V blocks for stuff. I make these tiny little V blocks for um, so this is I charge 10 quid a pair for a brand new official pair you're looking at 20 quid and they are just bearings for a high five tone arm which go into these little blocks here the tone arms sit on them if it isn't right it don't sound right music I'm the only one that I know of that 3D prints them. So yeah. Yeah, I'm always happy to help if you need help. Alright, have a good evening. Great to watch some boob painting. But <laughs> I'll see you later, mate. Have a good one. I'll be in a Rick stream tomorrow. In his chat, egging him on. Thanks, I definitely look at it. I'll be chat tomorrow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, have a look into it, man. Yeah, there's a lot of applications, especially in the um, train world. This is coming together nicely, actually. I don't often paint figures, really. I have been trying to get my skin down to a T.
Unfortunately, this camera doesn't show why you can see, so it doesn't show the layers up as much. But there's definitely imperfections in this print because this was, this was done on the Mars too. Printed it ages ago. So there's definitely imperfections on it. If I printed all my sound, it would be would be nowhere near as many. A little bit darker. I've seen Luke Towing use a resin printer, and I've seen Sam's Trains use a filament one. Yeah, filament ones are getting as good as resolution, but nowhere near as fine as a resin. There's cons and pros to using both, and it's like a resin one doesn't take as long, doesn't smell as bad doesn't use heat, so you've got no risk of fire. And it prints really well. Like, as you can see here, it prints that here. You know, detail like this. She's in a swimsuit where the camera focuses. No, you, could, you couldn't print something like this on a you know, filament. So, on a filament printer though, they're more robust. The, stuff, the parts come off are stronger. Um, so yeah. And it, there's no chemicals involved, because resin is a chemical. If you get it on your skin, it will burn. So you got to use gloves all the time, stuff like that. But again, it's I pay for a litre of resin, I pay 25 to 30 quid. And that resin will give me like a thousand prints at this size. So, where's filament for a 30 quid kilo roll can don't won't last that long. And because it does it in, it takes so much longer to print with filament. They're great for uh, dioramas, don't get me wrong, but for finer details, you're better off with resin. So, <laughs> it's one of those things. When you first start off, always go for the one printer. So I would suggest going for a resin printer when you start off. The easier to maintain, the easier to set up. And you know, the, the, you'll, you'll be printed off straight away with a resin printer. You just have to, all you have to do is level the bed, get set the zero, put for, um, that in, put some resin in, press print off you go as long as you've got decent settings um, where it's a lot more faff with a filament printer and you got to have those resins dialed in those, those settings dialed in or um, you'll have failure after failure quite quickly and also another big difference between resin and um, filament is filament doesn't matter where you put it it will print because it heats itself up as a heated bed whereas resin printers need to be kept in about 20 degrees this could start with a cheap one get the one that's got exactly yeah like I say I'd, I'd suggest buy a Mars 2 you can get hold of a Mars 2 if not a Mars 3 and then once you're comfortable with how to use a resin printer then I would Suggest going on to a uh, a filament printer because they they need a lot more work and a lot more maintenance. Because I will be getting a filament printer soon, hopefully, so I can start doing cosplay stuff.
you can see I'm not doing as much of a shading. Well, I'm going to look for a bit if I don't make it back. Thanks for the stream. Thanks for answering my questions. I really appreciate it. No, man. Great having you here. Love the conversations. I'm really happy to help. See you again. Yep. That car's getting lost. The car is getting lost in that. Put that down now. Got some Tuscan fur. That's the color I want. Oh, what is this music? Music for rubbish. That's better. Don't have to worry about it now. Phones off, do my ears in.
that's good, nice wash consistency. This is much better music than before. Yeah, so I'm not going to go too far this one. It's very dark. So I'm going to go like right in the crevices. Right in the deep dark pockets. There's plenty of this. Glaze will bring it all back together again. So yeah, once I've done the shading, because I'm nearly done with the shading, I'll be moving on to the highlights. Gla give it a good old glaze of the base colour again. But yeah. Just going to get this colour right in the corners and that. Sometimes you just get your years. One more colour to shade. Hopefully it will get it to full doom ball brown and shade it.
my partner has kind of brought me a cup of tea. Let's move my can somewhere. Let's put that over there. So I'm gonna put that over here. It's dangerous, I know, putting it next to a water cup, but there's nowhere else to put it. Um, let me see. So this is the last color. Did I put nothing there? Yeah, I put nothing in there now. Let's get this last color down on the shade. Take a quick break. And then. So it's going to be right in there. So I'm not going to be putting it much place as this one. This shade. Just in the darkest crevices. Good. Look at that, that's looking nice. Point would be happy with what I've done to his series. This is the darkest I'm going there.
to be arrows. You want to be very sparing of this darkest shade. I'm doing this as it's going to be under the hair, so I'm not too worried about it being shaded. Don't mind the cat being a noisy bugger. See, once I've done the skin, I'll move on to a model kit or something. So we'll figure out what I'm going to do for the outfit in. Okay, so that's that done. That's all the shading done. Next thing is to do the glaze, but first, I need a break. You're watching my stream now. <laughs> I'm opening two. So, there's only five in each of these packs. Uh, so, we'll go from the front. It's all mine in Japanese. So, Ponyard, Violu. <laughs> I need that one. I need that one. Yeah, the Chonk and then Sangoose. Wog Trio. Drift Loom. I can't remember his name. Charkid, that's it. That's Charkid. Charcoal. And oh, I've got his name now. <laughs> Rubbish pools. Thanks, man. Yeah, well. <laughs> Back to the glaze. 
It's nice to do a Pokemon break. Get some kiss on flesh. And we'll wore it down to a glaze. It's gonna be like very thin paint, very wary paint. And what what I do is I slap it all over. And it helps blend the colours in better. But before I do anything, there is this nasty, nasty line here. You can just faintly see it. I can I can see it a lot, but you can just faintly see it. That's where I've brought the shadow to a far past the original blend. So I'll try and re-blend that. With some Kizla flesh and Cajun flesh on. Yeah, that's too dark now, but that's the shade that I got there. I'll get a little bit lighter than that, so I had a bit more kids left. This is darker than the kids left there, so yeah, that's the color I want. Then, what I want to do is take this color and just Paint over the top of that line, and that'll help blend it back in. So it can't be seen as well. And that line back in so it's not as distinctive. Yeah, see, that's a lot better now. So, what I do next. So the next thing I need to do is water this kid's lip right now. So it's gonna be it's gonna need a lot of medium to mix it together. So I want it like very, very watery. Why well, you need a little bit more than that. Just to Then just slap it on because yeah, it's watered down. Ooh. Don't want too much, really. And you can always bring it back, thankfully, with a paintbrush, like so. It just helps blend those layers together. The last half 
So you still got for shades, but it just blends it better and a bit better. Just so the shading doesn't seem as harsh. You don't want much on your brush doing this. It just helps tone down the shading and bring the main colour back. Or you can go back over with a dry brush. And just remove some of it, it's got too much on there. But it just makes shading look so much better. Bloody dust will be the bane of me. Uh, here we go. So we, we just glossed the body and it's blended all the shading together. Making it look a lot nicer. So I'll do the same here with her head. Just give it a good old brush over. Bloody dust. Bloody dust gets everywhere and I hate it. I hate it with a passion. Yeah, so I'll go over just a quick brush with a wet brush and then with a dry brush go over and remove it a bit. So yeah. And then go back over, move the excess. So yeah. Looks a lot better once you glazed it. And then it's now onto the highlighting. Tell me if it's buzzing again. So the next to highlight, instead of going into the recesses, we want to start layering on top of the highlights. Oh, 
God, that was a good click. Needed to do that. Right, now that's that done. Let's do the highlights. So we need Kisla Flesh. That's too watery, really, to use. I'm not going to be using much. So we'll start with a Kisla Flesh base, like that. And then we add a bit of Screaming Skull, which is like an off-white, like a yellowy white. Kind of like very light sand. Ooh, that needs a good mix. Well, there you go. Then we just want to get a little bit of that and mix it with the kids now. Cool. Add a little bit more, just bring it a little bit lighter. Cool. That's nice and light. So next we want to wore it down. Again, like just like the shading, we don't want it too thick, but we only need a I don't want it too thin either. So yeah, that's nice. Like that. And now, with this, I'm just going to hit highlighted areas. Play dust. But then the base colour becomes a shade itself. I might need a bigger paintbrush. Bloody dust. Just gets everywhere. It's getting on my nerves. That's one tip done. Do we have a tip? Highlights done. There, let's do the collarbones. Bloody dust. Only problem working in my living room. Dust gets everywhere. Which is annoying. Dust. I'm really pissed off with this dust. 
I'm gonna have to start putting an air purifier in here before I start doing anything. Just start bringing that, basically with a highlight, start bringing the skin towards the light. This helps to define it a little bit better. Of course, I'm going to go all over the place with this because it's, it's a skin highlight. So, a lot of this is still going to be shaded. That's that highlight done. Next highlight. So highlight's gonna be a lot quicker. There's not gonna be as much work in the highlight as it was in the shading because in the mod figure like this for shading is what brings it back. I made to blend the edges a little bit. Make the highlight a little bit less harsh. Sometimes the brush just doesn't do it. If you've ever done makeup, you're probably used to doing this kind of thing. To blend, using your finger or a brush. Use my finger to remove any excess that's not needed. Like I said, it just helps it blend it in a little bit.
Well, I do on my cheeks, so I'll put blush on it too. Okay, then. Add a little bit more. So I'm going to get a little bit more screen skull. Now they need to give me a little bit more of a highlight. These are rather large and round. Most of the light's going to be on top. Bloody dust! Ah! Fucking dust! I just use my finger to blend it in. Ah! Bloody hell, fluffy! <laughs> One fluffy ray, but ray. <laughs> that is appreciated. You get to see boob. I did have Steven in there earlier. Look at that. Yeah. Much love. It means a lot, man. Rex inspired me. I'm going to save for a PG Razor. Really? <laughs> That's going to be fun, like. I might get... Um, like I said, my next PG is going to be in Unleashed. And will be painted. Come on. Bloody. Ugh. I hate dust. Gunship is just. I've got a skyscraper, but my brain wants a razor. Why is it? If it was sold separately, I'd just have a ship. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, ni it's a nice ship. It looks really good in PG. Especially with, like the extra rockets. Once I've done my highlights on this, I'm going to build something. Get my brain a breath and rest. Of the MG. Say what? Fine. Lots of spot. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I can see why. Razor of Yotmus Prime. Yeah, I do. Right. 
Because you're here, Fluff. I'm going to do another pack of Pokemon cards. While well, Rick's not here. <laughs> some kind of a headgear. Sneaky Pokemon, yeah, sneaky Pokemon. Oh, hello. That's nice. I can't remember a name, but... Some... Oh, uh, bagel. I think it's an olive tree. And Bweasel. That was a nice pull, actually. Do you only get five cards in this? Don't need you. I do need you. Probably you. But none of you. Definitely you too. It's weird you only get that many. Yeah, it's a Japanese one. So the EX gets five cards. And the Pokemon Go gets six. I'm gonna open a Pokemon Go while we're here. Just because I got the buzz. I'll buy some more cards at the end of the month. And there. Also, these don't follow standard rules also for opening Pokemon cards. You know where you you take the last two, and you put them, you put them at the back. So like in this case, we'll take that off for your misses. But normally you take the last two, and put them at the back like that. That's what you do with all Pokemon packs, but you don't do with the other. So you get like a carrier, Slowbro, Bulbasaur. No poop. Oh, that's very nice. And Dragonite V Star. To go with my steel energy. Boop. Been needing one of them. <laughs> Dragonite, yeah, love it. I think this is my spare one now. I've got two now. Rest of just spares. They go on my spare box. Let's get rid of all these packets. Let's get rid of our empty cup of tea and replace it with my can of Dr. Pepper. Alright. And let's finish off these highlights. I absolutely hate dust. It's everywhere. It's so annoying when you're trying to do a model like this. There's just large flat areas where the dust can easily adhere to. Mm. Right, there's a dust on the paintbrush somehow. Don't know how.
best bet is just to rework the area and move the paint. Yeah, I'm sick and tired of dust. Yeah, who wants to done this highlighting? There's one more bit of highlighting to go, and then she's done skin. I'm on a wall bath with this fucking dust. Fuck off. Okay, that's a beauty spot. Alright. One more highlight. And she is done. Skin is anyway. Then second title was dust. I wanted to paint today, still waiting for my pot to be delivered bloody royal tarts yeah a lot of places are getting um delivery delays i haven't been seen hopefully the package i sent rick gets to him tomorrow because i sent it by next day guaranteed so if it doesn't turn up they'll be i'll be having words Dust. That is dust. Right. <sighs> Bit miffed at myself. I only built the Sentinels core fight yesterday, but you know what? It's a big kit. Oh, I'm not going to rush it. Yeah, man. One of those kits you don't want to rush. I've got that with a Nightingale. I ain't even started it yet. It's a kit I don't want to rush. So I'm just going to sit there for a little while until I get round to it. Alright. If I remember correctly, this is a proper varnish, not an additive. Just double check. Right, cool. It's not just a 
a varnish it also would medium so yeah that's good good to know there's a varnish that's the main thing i want it for if you haven't noticed yet the <laughs> my follow go <laughs> just need to get my watch hours up my view count yeah No, I'm just painting this over. Fucking dust. <sighs> Paint this on to protect it from the fucking dust. <laughs> this dust is going to give me a fucking aneurysm. gone dust I'll try to promote you a bit more on Twitter you know I give you much bro love on streams gonna lift you up with my fluffy bottom if need be <laughs> I appreciate it man I do appreciate a lot but what you and Rick do to help me does mean a lot. Oh, fuck off, dust. Right. I am going to seriously just going to come in here and make the whole place fucking massively seal the room so dust can't get in. It's just random bits of a little bit of black here and there. Oh, so goddamn annoying. I could raid you, but unless you plan to stream after midnight. Eh. No, I'm only streaming until 11 tonight. I don't know if I could ever stream after midnight, to be honest. Right, I'm getting sick and tired of this dust. There's no dust on here yet, there seems to be getting on my brush. Where did you come from? Go away. So much dust on this thing. Cough. I don't know where all this dust is coming from. Seriously, don't. What is that now? Oh, fucking dog hair. I cough. Be banished, you fuck. 
I literally do it for 8 to 12 because it fits my evenings. But also, I don't like dumping into my friend's slots. I like to try and not be in competition. Might want to go tower your head. <laughs> oh, I'm done for the, I'm done painting. I'll build something now. Sod it. I've done the skin. The skin is done. Let's switch to build mode. It don't help this place is dusty. It's got fucking shit everywhere. So it's hard to keep stuff clean. I should read dust in here at some point. Oh. It's hard enough. Yeah. I should use something. Just keep the dust away from me. I do have a uh, uh, an air purifier, which I should bring in here to be honest. Needs a new um, filter on it though. Nice. Where's a little dust somewhere? I know. Layer, 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 layer. Base. Layer. 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 I'm gonna put these away. In the layer drawer. Let's go in there. You belong to the base. Right. Compressed air from tenor, pledge duster, mistake tenor, got to it, be man, <laughs> clean dust. Yeah, I'll get, I'll do, probably do it tomorrow after work. Oh, that's nice and warm. Warm being on that switcher. Alright. You see what dust is like just from the badge being there with the remote? Side. I can go up there. Be gone. We'll do it all. Put it together for now. Easy storage. Don't be like that. I can't be asked to fix it. That's the skin so far. So the skin's done. I don't know if I'm going to keep that hair colour, but it don't look too good. Got to get some decals of the eyes. And then I've also got to do the clothing. Nice rack, yeah. Alright. I'm done painting. Good night, let's get something to build. Oh. Ah, what should I build?
<laughs> As I built the Dom, let's build the Zaku for the same line. I haven't got a Zaku 21100 yet. So I've got another version of this. The Zaku 2 2.0 as well. Um, Uh, one year war. Yeah. I'll take the stream. Let's get. I was get started on it. I'm going to finish it off the next stream. Once I've done this, I'll get back to painting the uh, Kashaki, whatever it's called. Quite a few springs in it. Mm. Well, that's another odd thing. So I know it's with these. This version of these kits. You know, I'm sort of a Zaku builder myself. Even though I have a warrior Zaku. Psycho like Zaku, still, it's in this box, but yeah. size Zaku. <laughs> That's what was the MG and the HG and the bottle cap one. <laughs> yeah I know. I've got a big daddy Bowser too. all out of the box. Yeah, but something else I noticed about these kits is that even though the kit itself is a reprint, because it has a blue label on it, and all the other reprint kits I have, the instruction booklets also have a blue label on, but this ones don't. You gotta find out. I love that, look at that. I love how it does, these are what, Modern MG manuals are missing. 
reverse blue badge box, red badge mantle, yeah. Oh, you don't get kits like this anymore, do you? Look at that. F type, J type. And it shows you the difference between the two. That's the F5-6. The Vernians are different to the um, J21. You don't get that sort of detail anymore in these MG kits. It comes with both stickers and water decals. The problem is it's going to have ball joint and hips. That's the only problem with these kits. Right. I need H. That's D. Gonna need that at some point too. That's F. Apparently I don't need F yet. Maybe I do. I'll keep F out. Yeah, it's another machine gun like the Dom. Dom has a machine gun like that. It's around here somewhere. Another feature I love about Sentinel is mostly EXS, but it clearly shows and shows you how to build the S part if somebody wants to. That's cool. Multi choice manuals are so limited in gunplay. They are. Definitely are. God. Those hands are awful, though. This sprue is awful. Same as camper, bro. Yeah. Ugh. It's all polycap. Ugh. Got a lot of springs in this. There's the other polycaps. Then go over there. Just where they were. Yeah. Don't need D. Don't need any D. Oh, I seem to have tooted. Okay. Alright, let's start off with C. Again, I'm, not, I'm just gonna, I'm not going to be too worried about cleaning too much. Just want to build it. The other one I'll clean up quite nicely. Yeah, I'll build this till 11. We'll have another Pokemon card thing. I mean, the Sentinel's got screws. No idea why for a 2019 kit. Black screw joints. It's like a mental re re reinforcement. There. Kit can be dropped and just give the floor the middle finger. <laughs> no, definitely. I agree with you on that. I don't like this. Look how they would. Ugh. Yeah. So I don't have to hope there's other hands on this kit because it's don't even like cut into it. Can see really where you get mental 
metal belts and spikes of Zaku, so like a quid, yeah. I've got a um I got a goof part um two point oh to build. I've got metal parts for it. Because I love the goof. Goof's one of my favourites. <coughs> I got a goof custom which I'm making into a custom kit but nothing like a goof goof maybe see how many little bits are on this I spent like 50 quid on a metal part set for the salabi best part is I got a flag of a bag of Z on nice should really get something like that too from Isazabi. But yeah, look at all these little bits. <laughs> Internal description, yeah, look. <laughs> on an MG kit. And this is based on a PS2 game. This one. Do you know? Let's join these two pieces together. Maybe yeah, I want to get um, metal parts and metal etching for my Zazabi. Then paint up real nice. Oh, this kit's really shit. <laughs> Just really bad. This is, you know, this of a dom from the same kit. This is almost so much better. So much better. I do want some more Zaku kits, like I love the warrior ones, even the two of them are paid Bandai. Just like Zaku's a backpack, proper ones, even if it's missile pods, yeah. This is the only problem with... Yeah, this is the only problem with Zaku's and the Goof. Is all these little bits. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody kit. It's not the best of kits, this. <laughs> I'm 
Alright, let's go sight on now. Let's do this gun next. Hmm. Well, the nice thing about this is, well, it's got rocket pods. In fairness, well, it adds detail of plastic over decals. Stickers and I can't believe that. Yeah. It's like some of the HGs, more modern versions of Zaku, they're already put on. So you don't even have to worry about it. Isn't it? Yeah. And this is the same machine gun that the Dom has. But just the Dom, Dom is made better. I don't know why the Dom is made much more better than this. Not a clue. Almost. I don't know what song this is. And it can beg it off. There's more conjure apparently. I don't know about the Dom, the Dom had very little of this. I've built a lot better kits than this. <clears throat> and a lot older kits too. It seems like a very cheap, nasty kit this. And not much of an inner frame too. Look. The torso doesn't even move. <laughs> it's one piece. <laughs> Look at that bullshit. Talk about lazy. Oh god. D19, D20. I'm, I'm regretting just touching this kit now. I still can't believe that. So lazy. Yeah, yeah, the doors ain't gonna fall apart, is it? 
Fucking hell. Ground didn't spend much on this. I think it's been like a couple of quid, ten at most. I can see why now. The other piece disappeared too. First it's a dust, now it's shaky. <clears throat> I'm gonna be bomb finish this on string. <laughs> Just start a new key, I think. What is even this kit? Bazooka. <sighs> and then missiles. I don't know, I could maybe make a custom Gundam out of it. It comes with grenades. These are the grenades.
This kit just feels so wrong. I wouldn't even let your chinchilla chew this. My VV material. <laughs> Oh, listen to that snap. That plastic is so bad. seem to have a message. Yeah, come off. Need. Trying to get my light robe on and slippers on. Still here, just getting fluffier. That's fine. That won't be much longer, like another 20 minutes, I think. I'm probably going to call it a night. Oh. There we go. And then let's get these in. They just push in. Rocket pods, buoy angles. Right. Get a blasted torso. This is so stupid. Got things everywhere. So disappointed in the disappointed in this kid. What's my phone? 
for a reason. Take a picture of the stupidity of this kit. Something I expect from like a kit from the early 90s. I know a 2.0 is going to be a lot better than this when I get around to making a 2.0. Another poly cap. My fat fingers ain't gonna get in there. What's this kit made for? Like Slender Man. Ah, oh, can't. God, my needle nose can't get in there. stupidity of it. At least it isn't a clove tube. I had a build on camphor that made me feel like I was back in high school TNT class. Yeah, I couldn't it's like there's a tiny ass gap you had to get this little fucking thing into. It's only got it's only got a peg on one side. What even is that? Useless. Absolutely useless. I need two G's. To one of those kids, they might as well just reprint the entire thing. Just use the armor from it. Because it's that bad. Hey, Rick. <sighs> I raise you your board joints for a mono torso board joints. Which, for her pre season start, was insane. I watched it. Yet. I don't care about spoilers, so you can talk about as much as you want.
Pero... All I know is it's a lot of death. <laughs> yeah, that done. God, why are the joints so overcomplicated with a tool so simple sh piece of shit? 31 of 30. I won't spoil it, but I will catch up streams. Watch parties every Monday after my stream on Discord for people who want to watch. Yeah, why not? Sounds good. Need to watch episode two. I'll catch up on it. I still got to watch episode twelve yet of season one. I know more or less what happens, but you know, show bus. It's right here. <laughs> so the skin's done. Next is to figure out what I'm going to do for her clothes. Well, I've got to do her eyes and mouth. And all the, you know, got to do her makeup next, really. She has been varnished. How much? What do you mean, how much? <laughs> Unfortunately, if you're asking how much I sell it for, need to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't sell it because it is a special agreement between me and the artist. The artist said I can have it for my personal use only. Normally, the artist does um, figures for a Japanese company. However, I was lucky to be able to get this off them. Thank you. I think I took. There's 11 layers to the shading, and then about four to the highlights. But, you know, it did take me three hours. Another matte. <laughs> I'll get my stream fluffy heavy arms done with a 3D modeler just to print a bust one day. <laughs> Yeah, there's plenty. There's probably plenty out there. I'll do it, mate. I, am, unfortunately, I'm not skilled enough yet. And I can only do, technically, do simple things. Right, that's that done. goes on there. That goes on there. There's a lot of free mods in the furry community. The issue is 99% of them just do furry and boobs, not mech armor. Uh. And your 97 kit good, you need advanced techniques, not simple things. And it's kids. <laughs> yeah. Yeah it is. <laughs> Model torso with bore joints. But yeah, look how detailed. <laughs> look how detailed this is. Look how well this goes now. Oh, sod it. But yeah, look how. That's such a nice joint to have. But the rest of it. I just built a dom. No turn, no turn, no, no turny weast. They suffered back then. So. <laughs> the thing is, though, I just built a dom from the same line. Yes, uh, Saturday. And a dom is so much better than this. <laughs> it beggars belief. <laughs> Man, I hope that package gets to you tomorrow yeah it does doesn't it yeah I said it exactly <laughs> cut in half add axle I've got a 2.0 setup that I want to build I'll build that if I want a proper Zaku 
But at least I can get a choice between the F-type and the J-type. <laughs> I'm just going to check your uh, parcel. God damn. People keep downloading stuff. There you go. You should be expecting it by 3 o'clock tomorrow. But it's at Norwich right now. <laughs> See, this thing, we'll deliver it by 3 o'clock tomorrow. I paid for Royal Mail specifically guaranteed 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Bloody Royal Mail. Suck a dick. Yeah. No, you're not wrong. Fucking <laughs> nub for pages. Yeah, so if you ever look at that kits, don't buy this one. Don't bother with this kit. Even the weapons are like something you get out of a Tinker Toy. Plastic's that bad. Oh, I'm so miffed. <laughs> I'm just miffed at this kit. I'm miffed in general, to be honest. I see this. It's free for free. You pay for a service not filled. Exactly. Look at it. This. this is potty cap. Potty cap bullshit. <laughs> oh, punch one of the manuals back there. Yeah, the manuals are great. I love the manuals. Oh, I've got grenades. Take those. Love the grenades. Oh, hey, Cal. How you doing? So if you hear me just rant and rant on about how rubbish this kit is, <laughs> don't buy it. Give this Saku a miss. <clears throat> how you doing, Carol, anyway? Good to see you. You <laughs> poor crowns there, Charles Art. The ditch. <laughs> <laughs> So you need to buy kits in the early 2000s, just a man. Yeah. Well, the Dom's good. You can get the Dom. The Dom was a good kit. I actually liked the Dom. Sorry, Carol. You got lost in the maelstrom. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to the stream. I am building a Zaku 2. That is actually based on the PS2 game, One Year War. <laughs> hey. You cannot judge a man's, man's sexuality by how they say hello. You too. Oh god. Flicking things at myself. Alright. I think I'll definitely finish this off on stream at some point. <laughs> there we go. Right, 
to another cloth, boys. And again, having enough packs to pull more pussy. <laughs> Alright, what we'll do is end the stream. Sorry that you've come in a little bit late, everyone, but 11 o'clock. This is a bit angry if I don't come off. So, what we we'll do is we'll open a Pokemon card. Because, you know, well, I'm the last pool. I'm running a bit low, so I'll have to buy some more at some point. Definitely on Pokemon Go stuff. Oh, some more packs. Such a Wednesday from Smith, down to four packs. Gonna have to restrict the openings to points only. I'm burning them up for freebies. Yeah. Well, once I get my watch time up, yeah. there'll be a. There'll be points only instead of all these freebies you lot keep getting. Uh, I'll continue to late like, there. Looks like we've <laughs> massive content here. So I'll do Pokemon Go first. Like so. Steelix. Good start. That too. Can I remember? But what do do friends is double pools of like Rick and you might be five K is ten K. Yeah, fair enough. Badoof. Energy. Oh look at that. Silpion. That's a spare. Pretty. All right, there's only five cards in this one. <gasps> Full character card. Full art card. 85 out of 78. Look how look at these it is. It's a pace. It's it's a pastry Pokemon. No, pastry dog. <laughs> Wiglet. Cacnea. The Viper and Zagos. It's a dough boy. It is a dough boy. <laughs> so today, let's see what I pull today. I got loads of cards here. I think I might need that Rylu actually. I definitely need that Wog Trio. Definitely don't need that. So yeah, so with decent cards I pulled the gay. Pulled the gay. <laughs> Dragonite V Star. Sylveon. Professor. And this little boy here, little dough boy. Good cards today. And I think most of these are spares except for these ones. So the rest are just spares to me. Even Sylveon. Lift that dragon into a camera. Alright. <laughs> it is my spare. He's a lovely boy, isn't he? But the camera doesn't want to decide. And this is another one. This is a spare for me as well. Even Japanese is lovely, yeah. The Japanese don't make no difference, really, to the art. The art's good. Oh, I saw a V-Star Dragon like 50 quid. Ungraded? <laughs> or oh, graded? Good, I think that's my third. <laughs> so... Let me see, spares. Spare st stars, I want, I want to keep. <laughs> I 
Oh, there's a hollow. Oh, there you go. Which I do have. Come on, you bastard. There we go. That's a spare. Spare. Error in print, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be able to tell you if this has an error in print. <laughs> Someone Japanese. Alright, those will go in the box. Those will go in my folder. That will go to V. <laughs> it does, yes. Alright then. Oh, it's been fun, boys. Thank you for joining in at the end there. I have reached my goal, follower goal. I just need to reach my uh, viewing goal next. And I shall see you tomorrow on Rick's stream. Thank you. Thank you very much. Talk to you tomorrow. Night now. <laughs>